Welcome to the Paperless Productivity Podcast, where we give you the tips, tricks, and know-how to solve your biggest workflow challenges and bring greater productivity into your workplace every day. Think about your typical day. From the moment you wake up to the moment you close your eyes, you're likely in communication with someone, probably more than someone. From face-to-face conversations and phone calls to emails and even automated forms, everyone has correspondence they have to manage in some form, whether it's with customers, constituents, vendors, students, patients, or even your own employees. But here's a hard truth. Your current methods of creating, distributing, and archiving customer letters or other communications probably include a lot of manual steps with outdated or disconnected systems. What if there was a way to manage these efforts so that you're providing a high level of information and service without spending your entire day only managing these communications? Automation of these types of communication processes can make a huge difference and can make your organization more efficient by providing information as quickly as possible without sacrificing the support that these communications are meant to provide. Today, we're joined by Carolyn Kane, Senior Product Evangelist for Highland, who will help talk us through the many benefits that automated customer correspondence management can bring to your organization. Thanks for joining us today, Carolyn. Well, thanks for inviting me to talk about customer communication management. All right. So first, can you define for us what customer correspondence management involves? Sure. Um, well, that's a mouthful. Customer communications <laughs> management. I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and call it CCM from okay. now on. Uh, it's really more of a strategy that an uh, organization might use so that they can improve the outbound communications that they have for all of those types of scenarios that you just mentioned. And um, it it includes a lot of things like the creation of that information, the delivery, um, even the storage of that final communication so that you can retrieve it at some point in time for auditing purposes or even just because that customer, that constituent, or that patient requests to have that information. So, I mean, there are so many things that this could involve from marketing um, and, and sort of those mailers that you might get to things like renewal notifications that might come up frequently throughout the year. Uh, In insurance, we see claims correspondence, which can oftentimes have a lot of correspondence between that insurance company and that claimant. Mm -hmm. So there's just a lot of this communication. And when you start looking at all of it, it really does add up. And, um, And we're not just talking letters to the mailbox. I mean, that was what we were talking about 15, 20 years ago. But, you know, now we have so many different ways to interact with customers. That could be um, through SMS text. It could be through web portals. There are so many different places that they expect to have these touch points. I mean, I think the most common that we see is email, but we are seeing a lot of our customers moving away and having a preference for something like texting. So we really need to look at CCM solutions that are going to support all of this across the spectrum and so that an organization can really automate these outbound communications across this entire process. And, um, and then in the end, they're going to improve the relationships with not just their customers, but even other businesses that they do business with, like uh, partners and vendors and things like that. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So now that we know what kinds of communications we're talking about, and no pun intended, uh, tell me about the technology side of it. So what does a good technology solution look like to manage all of this? What are some of the components that serve these efforts? Well, sure. I I mean, I'll walk through some of the things that I think should be included in any kind of end-to-end CCM solution, but it's important for customers to realize that, um, or for any organization to realize that you you might need a little bit of a CCM solution, or you might need, you know, a whole full-blown dedicated CCM platform, depending on how much of this communication you're managing, how much volume you have, um, how frequent that is. So, so it's you know, not necessarily kind of, a one-size-fits-all kind of scenario. Absolutely not, yeah. I mean, so what I think that should be at the basis of just every CCM solution is some kind of repeatable template. So some kind of template that says this is what this letter will look like, um, but then also includes the ability to have some dynamic component as well. So what I mean by that is, you know, you'll have a template that will have all the information you normally will send, but then things that will change, like you know that correspondent's name or their address, um, any of their personal information they're going to put in there, you want that to be able to be dynamically inserted. And we'd prefer to automate that. You know, I, I'll tell a little story. This is why 
I'm so passionate about CCM is that about 15 years ago, I actually worked in admissions for a secondary school. And all of our letters were templates, but we had to copy and paste all of the information into those letters. And um, so that was all manual. And I mean, we had some mail merge that we would do, but it couldn't pull information from all of the different places that we had it. So there was, there was a fair amount of copying and pasting. And, and I'll be honest, some mistakes were made. Mm -hmm. And it also was just really inefficient. So, um, so you, com you put those two things together. You know, we couldn't rely on the information that was going to be in those letters. We did, weren't always sure that it was 100% correct. And then just the time it took that I think, um, I think is a really good reason. If you're looking at your correspondence processes and there's any kind of a manual component, um, you're, you're going to have those problems. So ideally for me, some kind of a template that allows you to have dynamic insertion of data from multiple data sources would be ideal. Um, and, and my preference is always to be able to have those templates be managed without necessarily having to have custom scripting or have the IT department have to manage that because these letters are always changing. Um, legal language that you need to put in there is, is always being changed by a legal department. Uh, we frequently have that where I work where they'll say, okay, here's our new legal paragraph that we need to include at the end of that because, you know, we've updated it. Mm -hmm. So those things are constantly changing. If you always have to go to IT, you're going to have a little bit of a backlog and it's, it's going to minimize the amount of correspondence that you can automate just because it always needs to be maintained by that IT department instead of the people who own it, the people who are always going to be sending out that correspondence and they really know it. So that's the first component. Okay. I know that was a, a really big one. <laughs> um, but you know, moving on to being able to um, manage those, and I, I mentioned automation a few times. Um, you know, managing those templates themselves can be a really big job. So making sure that you have uh, some kind of tool in place that doesn't require um, you to manually um, manage all of your components, your fragments, uh, things like clauses, mm -hmm. is, is really ideal. Because I, I do know organizations that have, you know, 2,000, 3,000 templates they're going to be using, and they have wow. components that are reused in all of these. So... Um, so some kind of global component library to go along with template management, I think, is a complete must, depending on, of course, you know, how many of these templates you have, how many clauses you might have. But, um, but it is a really important thing to consider. Now, what about connecting or integrating these with other business systems? Is that something that is, is an important function to consider as well? That's huge. I think so many organizations... and. You hear a lot of buzz these days about digital transformation, mm -hmm. and at the basis of a lot of the digital transformation uh, message is really the fact that we've already created a digital environment for so much of our business, but oftentimes, you know, it's a, it's a little bit of an urban sprawl issue when it comes to technology. <laughs> you know, we have different systems doing different things. They're, they're not connected. But anytime you're sending out correspondence, you might have little bits and pieces of that information in different systems. So it's really important to make sure that you're not, um, you know, pulling information that's outdated from one system when another system might have that updated information and, and things like that. So just connecting all those systems together. And, and it's going to eliminate those manual touch points that we see when sometimes we have some kind of correspondence management solution that does about 75%, and then that extra 25% involves somebody copying and pasting or manually entering that. So that complete automation is going to minimize those mistakes, and it's going to make sure that you have that most updated data that's being entered into those letters. And I would imagine that distribution is kind of that, that final piece of the puzzle, you know, making sure distribution and then reporting back and seeing, you know, um, you know, how people are responding to this and, and what the performance is like. Um, talk to me a little bit about what, what kind of technology solutions, uh, what people need to consider in those areas. Sure. Well, so, you know, if we move, we transition from talking about managing templates to composing and creating those final documents, mm -hmm. um, you're going to break it up into a few different categories. So there are some documents that might be composed on demand. So, you know, think of that customer um, service representative who is going to be talking to a customer and they'll say, sure, I'll send out your packet right now. And they hit the button and, and it composes. And then, of course, you have the batch scenarios. So I think when it comes to distributing, um, sometimes how it's created is going to determine that. So you have batches that are maybe going to be sent to some kind of production printing. 
and um, you know you have to make sure that you have all the correct transformations and you have to have the those postage marks that are really important for that or you might have you know a customer service representative who just needs to attach it to an email and send it off so um, it's important to know what kind of a process you have to create the documents and uh, also where that document's going to go so you can determine. So it's really important, I think, to have a flexible tool that allows you to account for those different scenarios. And you talked a little earlier about, you know, the whole the, the buzzword of digital transformation, right? And we have talked a lot on this podcast about how that drive for going digital um, often has to do with, with meeting customer expectations. So I can imagine a big reason why many organizations really want to automate their communications is because their customers now expect it. Is it something that you feel you're seeing as well? Absolutely. I mean, customer demand is, is really driving this because information is so much more available to them. And um, and they're also doing business at all hours of, of the day. I mean, it's it's really kind of a legacy idea for us to think that business is only happening from nine to five. Mm -hmm. And um, people come home from work, that's when they're going to start to deal with those things like that insurance claim or, exactly. um, or even their banking. So um, it's yeah, really important... Insurance disasters don't only happen during business hours, right? <laughs> no, well, that that is so true. <laughs> so it's important for us to consider um, when they're going to need access to that information, when they're going to want to submit requests, when they're going to want to have that business available to them. And, um, and they're driving it. So they are able to do that in so many different areas of their lives. You know, stores are open late. Everything's available on the Internet 24 hours a day, so they're expecting that. And when they can do that, it makes them a lot happier. It makes them a contented customer, which is what most of us are really trying to achieve is that customer who's happy with their business and is going to become a repeat customer, or they're a happy student and a happy family or a happy patient. So that's what we're all trying to do. Absolutely. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the elephant in the room. I'm sure there are some people that are listening to this and wondering if automating all of these types of communications are going to make it less personal, and if that's going to negatively affect their relationship with the people they're communicating with. So what would you say to those who are concerned about this, and is it possible that automating all these communications could actually have the opposite effect and make those relationships better? Yeah, I mean, I absolutely think it can make those relationships better, but it's an important question, and it really comes down to solution design and making sure that you're designing a solution that is going to work with your organization and with those that you interact with. So, um, you know, and that's going to change whether you are a university or your uh, government or whatever that's going to be. You're going to have different needs for those people that you communicate with. Um, however, I will say that... Uh, it, it can. I mean, it can have the effect where it can seem, make it seem less personal. I think some of us have that feeling. We've, we've seen mm -hmm. that where you get that letter and it has your address on it, but then it says, dear resident. Right. Or um, <laughs> my favorite is uh, somebody that I work with forwarded me her um, reminder for her oil change from her, um, her garage. And they said, it was her dealership. And they said, you know, dear, and they put her first and last name there, and it was all in caps. Oh. So, you know, <laughs> while they tried to be personal, it was really clear that it was something that just happened yeah. in an automated fashion. They were pulling data from some database that only stored capital values for things. And, um, and so we had a good laugh over it, mm -hmm. and we talked about how important it was to make those things feel personal, to make sure that you have – some kind of salutation in there that is um, going to be something that somebody will respond to. And uh, make sure that you have the correct data and that there aren't any mistakes in the data. So good data is a huge part of having that good outgoing communication. But in the end, for, for all of us, for all of us organizations that are sending things out, um, you know, our business is going to be more agile when we're not spending time manually going through those letters and correcting the mistakes that mail merge brought in mm -hmm. or, um, you know, making sure, I mean, back in the day, 15 years ago, I was still um, having to insert things in the envelopes and, and mail them oh. out. And I will tell you, we were not very agile. <laughs> um, but that 
digital experience is going to make your business more agile. And then you can respond to requests. You can respond to customer needs so much faster, and they're going to be a lot happier. So do you have any good examples of this like that you could share about how specific industries have been able to adapt these automated systems and you know we can kind of get a better picture of what this looks like in the wild? Yeah, I think that um, I see a huge demand for contract management and that's not something that's that's new. Mm-hmm. We have been trying to automate contracts for a really long time in, in many different areas. But I think that as businesses are growing, um, their back office processes uh, and those things that are not sales, they're not like their showroom or whatever that might be, they're, they're not getting bigger, but business is getting bigger. So mm-hmm. they are having to do more with less, which I think a lot of us have heard so much of. Sure. But, um, you know, they're, so they're sending out those contracts. Those contracts are, are needing to be made so we could, they can do more business, but they don't have more resources to do that. So um, in just about every industry, and there really is no specific industry, I'm seeing more of a demand for that. And that's just so that you can have somebody who can use their knowledge of the contract process, but also use the technology to assist them in that. So they might fill out a request where they're um, making all of the choices. They're saying it's uh, this is a non-disclosure agreement, so it's it's pretty you know cut and dried. But we need to put in this clause because it's going to the state of New Jersey that has some kind of different language it needs. And so they can make all those selections, and then we let the software do the work for them. And um, that means that they can just create these that much faster. So I think that it really can make those back office processes so smooth. But we do have some industries that I see that are really hot areas for customer communication right now. Insurance, we've talked about a few times, you know, there is always a drive to make all of that communication so much more efficient because there are not less claims coming in. Mm -hmm. So they're handling more and more business all the time and they really want to keep those customers. There's lots of Uh, there's lots of competition out there for those customers as they switch insurance companies. So keeping those customers happy, having your insurance representatives able to respond to them quickly, create those claim packages quickly, really can can help them out. So um, we we do see it all over, though. There's there's use cases in um, just about every industry for human resources. I mean, we all have employees, and, and I get communications from Highland Software all the time that tell me that something has changed for, you know, maybe our retirement package or something like that comes in the mail for me. So that all has to be generated too. So across the board, I think that there is not an organization out there that couldn't improve this in some way. I think think that's very true. So how can organizations start to implement CCM for their organizations? How do they get started with this process? Well, that's a really good question. I think that a lot of organizations feel like this is something that is going to be a really big investment, and it seems a little intimidating. So I would say the first thing that any organization should do is take a look at what they're currently doing and see where they can make improvements. And if they know that they need some kind of large CCM platform, they're like, you know, we have pushed all of our other tools to the limit, so we really need to make this investment, you know, then they can move forward with with that just knowing that they've already done all the automation they can do up until this point. And and a CCM platform, you know, will contain all of the things we already talked about. It's usually all in one place and it makes it so much easier to be able to do all of the different things. But if an organization has smaller needs or more specific needs, uh, just taking a look at look at those processes and saying, where can I automate some of this? Where can I begin to automate? Maybe there's you know, a single type of contract that gets produced more than any of the others. So we'll just start with that one, and it will save us time, and then we can start examining our other processes. So I would say just to start small and see where you can start making those little differences, and then once you get to a point where you have automated as much as you can or um, or if you have huge volume, then, you know, start looking at those CCM platforms and see what's out there and what might fit your business needs. And they do range from, um, you know, just contract management all the way up through, you know, a, con- a CCM platform that will handle just about any type of communication and, um, and does it all in one place. So it really depends on the customer needs, but there's a lot that's out there. 
Excellent. Well, thank you so much for sharing all of this great information with us today, Carolyn. It was really great to have you on the show and to hear about all the different ways that organizations are using CCM and all the different ways that they can start to adapt this for the future. Thanks so much. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to Paperless Productivity, where we tackle some of the biggest paper-based pain points facing organizations today. We'll see you next time. Thanks again for joining us today for this episode of Paperless Productivity. This podcast is sponsored by ImageSoft, the paperless process people, which you can learn more about at imagesoftinc.com. That's imagesoftinc.com. Join us next time where you'll learn how to harness the power of technology, supercharge efficiency, and accomplish your organization's goals.